I hate laptops, they're cringe, is typically my stance on portable computing. The reason that's my stance is we all know by now that typically whenever you try to do anything demanding on a laptop, it turns into... And the next thing you know, you have chestnuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs> and your laptop doesn't work. For me, a passing grade on a computer is being able to game or edit without the fan sounding like or it becoming so hot that the computer starts to stutter and slow down. That trade-off shouldn't exist when you get a laptop over a desktop. At most, I will use a laptop for watching videos or playing TFT at 20 frames per second. However, lately, there have been some laptops that seem to be able to keep up with the expectations of their Asian parents. Emotional damage! So now, we're gonna see if this one can do the same. This is the HP Omen Gaming laptop that AMD and HP were kind enough to send out to me and we're gonna try to destroy it all right now throw it i don't want to creative interpretation of the review is appreciated throw the laptop the magic of editing this is too dark what's the harry potter thing lumos as bright as it gets. A few cool features this laptop has to offer is their new hinge design, tasteful RGB keyboard, the trackpad is also larger and easier to operate for those of you with big fingies. The system also comes with AMD Smart Shift and AMD Smart Access Memory, which helps optimize your system so it performs well under load. Their cooling system, which we'll put to the test here in a minute, is the Omen Tempest Thermal Solution and it helps keep the laptop cool while it's under load as well. On top of that, you can also customize the Omen 16 with the Omen Gaming Hub software. Now that we have the laptop in front of us the first thing we're going to judge is the exterior now when i look at the outside of this i'm immediately pleased and the reason for that is because you're looking at someone who's been irresponsible at hotels and airports i've had laptops stolen from me a couple of times now and something i've noticed with the two laptops that were stolen from me is that they actually had extravagant cases rgb lights and they looked like expensive gaming laptops with this simple exterior immediately thinking that this is something i would feel more comfortable taking with me on the road on a more serious and relatable note the outside's very smooth it's uh, actually a very nice matte finish and i've noticed that with the little bit of grease that comes from skin they're not leaving as many fingerprints as they would on other designs, which I'm immediately pleased with. So this is going to be one of the bigger things that we're going to be looking forward to in this laptop review, which is, is this design for cooling enough to keep the computer quiet, but also cool while doing demanding tasks? Okay, so specs wise for this computer, we are working with a Ryzen 7 5800H for the processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and for the GPU, we have a Radeon RX 6600M. Overall, those specs are enough to get the job done if you're trying to push it for some higher ending content creation or video games while streaming. However, I will say I have two concerns. Number one, is the RX 6600M going to be enough if say I wanted to play an FPS at a somewhat competitive frame rate. We're talking anywhere from 100 to 140. And then number two, 16 gigabytes of RAM is not the worst thing in the world. To be honest, a couple years ago, it was like the sweet spot, the perfect standard. But as we progress farther throughout time, God, it's 2022, I'm getting so old. We hope to see people who are trying to produce content or a game at a higher end level to be using 32. Don't get me wrong, 16 gigabytes is enough. I've used 16 gigabytes for a majority of my content creation career to make anything that I needed. It's just nowadays, I would prefer 32. But you're also talking to someone who uses Chrome and keeps 100 tabs open at all times. I'm curious, how much is a laptop like this? Okay, from Best Buy, this specific model, the 16.1 that comes with all the same specs. Oh, it actually has 144 hertz monitors, so that's nice. It is $1,100. For most stores online, it actually looks like it's listed a little bit closer to $1,500 on average. So $1,100 is a really good sale price, but on paper for what we see for the specs, $1,500 is still fair. That being said, we haven't even tested it yet. So we have a couple games downloaded on here. I believe Valorant, Apex, Among Us, All right, I'm pretty sure everyone here remembers how cracked of a gamer I am. Oh, 
Please let me on these kids. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna test on this computer is Valorant. I think it's a pretty safe benchmark. It's a very popular game. It does really well. A lot of people use it as the main competitive first person shooter. Uh, as far as the settings go, I want to keep this as realistic as it would be to someone who is a competitive FPS gamer. And so for the settings, we have everything mostly on that's not what they would play on. But okay, you know what, it works. We're gonna get an idea of how good this computer actually is. We're playing on high settings. We have antistropic filtering up to eight times and we have anti-aliasing on up to 4X as well. So it shouldn't be that bad. I'm cracked. <laughs> I'm fine. Everything's okay. Ah! That's not fine. Woo! No! Just be better. How are you that good? It's fine. <laughs> I'm losing. This guy's crouching in a corner to death! Oh my, I actually forgot that I was doing this review for a little bit there. The frames were smooth. 144 hertz, the frame rate felt higher than I have sweat on the lap was sweating in a death match, Jesus. Okay, surprisingly, the average FPS for Valorant on high settings at 1080p was 156. Is that right? Laptops are not normally Really? Oh my God. Wow. I don't know if they really optimized Valorant lately or what's going on, but that is a substantially higher score than I'm used to seeing on Valorant, especially on a laptop. 156 is amazing. Like 144 FPS is typically the standard for what competitive esports should be. A lot of people prefer 240, obviously, because we have that. I think we even have 360 now. But 144 Hertz is basically the bare minimum for competitive esports, especially esports where your reaction time is necessary for your success. Okay, so while while this is launching, I just want to voice this right now. One of my biggest concerns with Apex, especially on laptops, you are so loud, is that this is incredibly GPU dependent. And so this is where we see all good laptops come to die normally. I'm a little bit afraid to test this because I will usually see... Margaret Coherer. Listen, I appreciate all the work you guys put in. Okay, I do, but... So right here in the menu, we're already seeing lower than what we got for actual gameplay in Valorant. I know they're very different games. They're not really comparable in that sense. That's why we're testing different games to get different results to see what will fall short. We'll play a ranked game. Am I allowed? Am I allowed? Apex, can, can, I, can I do that? Thank you, okay. Already stuttering, queuing up for a game. <laughs> oh my God. What settings are we on? Like this actually looks surprisingly nice. It is a very high, high, high. We're on high settings. Wait, we're on high settings and the game isn't lagging. Did they only give me a 6600? This seems so much stronger. I'm not stuttering playing Apex on high settings on a laptop. Okay, two snipers. Yeah. Again, this isn't like what you would want to see if you were trying to rank up and get to the higher levels of ranked play. But if I drop this to low, actually, what will we get if we get low? Uh, well, the me medium-ish low, medium-ish low. We're getting like 10 FPS higher. Okay. I want to see what happens when we get into an actual fight because there's no way I'm getting performance like this. Ooh, what is that? Oh, don't Actually, now that I think about it. Ah, there it is. Okay, the computer, computer's a little loud. I'm actually gonna take a second here. Where's my phone? Let me get a decibel test on this thing. Ooh, think, oh my God, my teammates are so nice. All right, how loud is this? I don't know if you can see that, but we're looking at high 60s, low 70s, which, for me, it's really not ideal. Again, laptop standards. As far as performance goes, amazing. Well, kind of like I was talking about earlier where it gets really hot and if you have this thing on your lap, next thing you know, <laughs> it's not what you want ideally. The last laptop review we did, we were looking at about 10 decibels lower, which was really nice. If we're getting high 50s, low 60s, that is really, really, really good. So it wasn't a perfectly accurate test because I did change the settings midway through the benchmark. 
However, between high, low, medium, to see anywhere from 90 to 100 FPS, especially during actual fights with gunplay and other players on screen, that to me is enough. Performance wise, that is definitely enough. Anyways, moving on to Unigen Heaven. I'm really surprised. I'm like expecting this thing at some point to like take off the mask. Show me your true colors. Show me that you're a laptop. But so far, the performance has been great. Last test we're gonna do is Furmark 3D. This is the Eye of Sauron, where all good graphics cards come to fry. See what I did there? We're gonna test this thing at 1080p because I don't think you're gonna be gaming any higher than that. You should be good. I always love this little <laughs> Caution, Farmark is a very GPU intensive application and you may experience some instability or system shutdown. Oh, that's great. I am going to leave this computer like this for 30 minutes and then I will come back and we'll see number one, is the computer still on? Two, what are the FPS at? Cause right now we're looking at 104, 105. And what's the temperature at? Cause right now we are looking at, we're at 69 degrees. Oh, we're go. Okay. I'll just come back in 30 minutes. This thing is hot. <laughs> A few moments later. Okay, so it's been about 50 minutes since we let this thing stress test. And I'm actually really happy to see this like right here, this flat curve. Currently the GPU is at 75 degrees Celsius, which is really hot. But to those of you that don't understand computers, it's really not that bad. The reason I'm happy to see this flat curve is because, and I said this last time I reviewed an AMD certified laptop, and that's that I believe that AMD has found a way to kind of throttle the performance of their parts. So they don't perform so well and burn themselves up to the point where the laptop stutters and basically becomes unusable. What I'm saying is I do believe that after this much time under this much load, this computer can still actually put out more FPS, but AMD is actually dialing back that performance so that the laptop can continue to perform for an extended period of time rather than just burning itself out. I think it's an amazing compromise because obviously we would all rather have a computer that works than one that just stutters and is unplayable. And I would say with Firmark 3D, one of the most stressful full tests that you can put your computer under. That is exceptional. I will say though, this thing is a little bit loud. Here's the before. Here's the after. Which is interesting to me because that just goes to show that there was a lot of thought that was actually put into this cooling design, which helps limit the sound that this laptop will emit when it's under load. I will say some closing remarks before we're done reviewing this laptop. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with this thing. I say that not just because I'm being paid to review this, but for one major reason. If you were to take a look at the PC market right now, it is kind of a disaster. If you were to tell me this computer was $2,000 after I reviewed it, I would have been like, eh, I get it. You gotta pay more for the portability. That's about the same you would pay for a computer that would perform quite a bit better. Getting a graphics card alone for a system that gets the performance that this laptop was able to get costs more than half that price. It's the reality of the world we live in, which is unfortunate because I don't like spending a lot of money when I wanna get computer parts. However, it does just shine a brighter light on this laptop because this thing is actually worth the money. The last thing I'll go to talk about before we're done with the review. Number one, if we take a look at the side of the computer, I forgot to mention two big things that this computer has. Number one, an ethernet port, and number two, an SD card reader. It's nice to see that the HP Omen Gaming Laptop 16.1 didn't forget that. Anyways, all of that being said, overall, I would give this laptop an eight, 8.5 out of 10. Price is good, the performance is solid. It is a little bit loud when it's under load, but it's not to the point where you really feel like you need to leave like a parent with a crying baby in a movie theater. The only final thought I have at this point is Omen and HP. Thank you so much for helping sponsor my girlfriend's next birthday gift. I hope you guys found this video creative, entertaining, or informative in any way, shape, or form. And as always, have a good day. And yes, in case you're wondering, I did buy a house. Thank you guys so much for watching the videos.